Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a presentation about zirconia cementation using Reliax Universal Cement. Now, this cement is uh, just recently released, and we'll take you through 10 tips on how to get this cemented properly. First off, this is a truly universal type of cement. It covers almost everything we do in dentistry in the uh, dual cure resin cement type of indication. So you can do endodontic posts, crowns, bridges, restorations on abutments, inlays, onlays, veneers, and Maryland bridges. Today we're going to be talking about cementing the zirconia bridge. So we're going to bond this bridge in place using Reliax Universal Cement. Now step one, you have to prepare the tooth in the proper dimensions. So we want to have a chamfer preparation for margin and then have at least 0.8 millimeters of reduction. So this is important to make sure you have enough thickness for your zirconia restoration. We also have to make sure we're thinking about the connectors between the abutments and the pontic as well because we want to plan for pontic strength. Step number two, after the bridge is milled and sintered and shaded, we're going to sandblast the inner part of the restoration then clean it with alcohol. And this prepares the bridge or the zirconia crown for maximum bonding. It's important once you take the temporary bridge off to use some non-fluoridated pumice to clean the tooth prior to trying in the bridge. So I'm going to go through a couple scenarios. Scenario one, you do your sandblasting either at your lab or you do it. The patient's going to come in for a try-in and so what you'll do is you're trying it in the mouth but this contaminates the surface and so these phosphates start to form on the surface. So then we have to of course uh, clean this again. So you're going to clean it with either sodium hypochlorite or uh, Ivoclean. So both these work well. Or scenario number two, we could have the patient come in and again the bridge is tried in and you can do the sandblasting after this and then clean it with alcohol. So these are easy ways for you to kind of work through that scenario. Since it's important to realize that if you don't respect this surface, then the bonding won't be to its optimal level. And we'll talk about that in a little bit in terms of how to treat this uh, bonding surface with respect. Because you have to think about the tooth, but you also have to think about the zirconia and of course the cement that sits between these. But this cement has been having excellent bonding results and we'll go over that in just a moment. Now it's important to realize this is not like dilithium silicate. Zirconia, you cannot use hydrofluoric acid on it, you can't use hydrogen peroxide, and you also cannot use phosphoric acid. Otherwise, it will hurt the bond. And so you have to do instead a sandblasting with 50 microns at a pressure of 30 PSI. We will usually have this completed at the dental lab so that it's a consistent type of protocol and it's important to have protocols in your office so that you can get this done and have maximum bonding. So again we would clean this with alcohol and have it ready for try-in. So when we take it in for try-in then we're going to make sure that uh, we're going to get a really excellent dual cure type of response with really fantastic long-term results. The Reliax Universal Cement comes in four different shades and you also have try and paste for these. By far I think the translucent shade is going to be the one of choice and this is my choice anyway. I think it's uh, fantastic. You can't really see it when it goes on and it has uh, you know, great properties. If you're using a high translucent type of zirconia, you have to pay attention to these shades of cement. So you have A1 also to go underneath. And of course, if you have some uh, opaque type of resins, this is going to help you. So A3 opaque and white opaque will help you if you're working in implants and also working with other zirconia type of uh, bridges and crowns and things like that. Step five, it's important to clean the zirconia bridge after you do a try-in because there'll be phosphates on the bridge from the saliva because the saliva does contaminate the bridge. So anyway, it's important to look at this and take care of it. 
Now to back this up, in 2017, Rosentritt et al. They had a paper and a presentation about surface treatment on shear bond strength of high translucent zirconia. And what they found was that if you leave these phosphate groups on after you do a try-in, the phosphate groups in the saliva will contaminate the bond and actually it can go down to zero megapascals. So we want to be very careful and make sure if you have saliva, make sure you clean this off by doing the protocols and scenarios that I discussed just in the aforementioned part of this discussion. Now just to summarize, when we take this bridge and do a try-in and just check the fit and make sure everything is okay, we're actually getting a contamination of that zirconia bonding surface. So we have to clean those phosphate groups off and make sure this contamination of the phosphate groups are gone. So this is how we do it. After trying, one of the ways you can uh, clean the phosphate groups off is to use IvaClean. And this is what I prefer to use because it's pre-packaged and it's easy for me to get in and do the job. So when we're using this product, we're actually going in and scrubbing the phosphates off. So it's really just a cleanser. But you can use sodium hypochlorite or the IvaClean and both will work very effectively to get those phosphate groups off. And we talked about this as being scenario one if you go back and watch this video again. And so by cleaning this, it's going to make the self-curing bond of this cement outstanding. So now we just have to clean the IvaClean off. So we'll just rinse with water and this will prepare the surface for doing a great bonding job. There are two ways to cement zirconia. When we have a crown and bridge situation, we could use the cement plus adhesive, but really cement by itself is the process of choice. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. So you'd add the Scotch Bond Universal Plus in an advanced bonding situation. And it's a one bottle system, but you're not gonna use it on a zirconia bridge, it's not needed here. So the question would be, how do you know this? And if we look at this report from Cohen, it's a biomaterials report, you can see the resin bondage trends to multiple substrates. And looking at this report allows us to know whether we need to go to the next step of adding something like a Scotch Brown Universal Plus. If we look at the zirconia bar graph a little bit closer, very interesting results. On the left, you can see the shear bond strength of the Reliax Universal Cement with its self-adhesive. So it does not require the primer. And the primer is the Scotch Bond Universal Plus. So on the left, you can see that it's performing at 55.6 megapascals. If we look on the right, when you do use Scotch Bond Universal Plus, you can go to 61.6 megapascals. So this tells me when you're placing Crown and Bridge, all you have to do is take the Relax Universal Cement and use it. You don't have to have any kind of primer because they're self-adhesives that give this an outstanding bond in the situation. And this is what I need for long-term success. So I'm really quite excited about this and uh, it's something that makes it simple, easy, and now we'll also look at how it cleans up. If you look at the tooth surface itself and the pretreatment options, for a crown or a post or a bridge, we don't need to use adhesive. Therefore, we are not going to use etch. So if we go to option two, where you need a bit more kind of selective etching, so just on the enamel, for instance, you're doing an inlay and onlay, this would be recommended and then you'd use your Scotch Bond Universal Plus. Now for option three, which would be for tabletop restorations, veneers, or adhesive bridges, like Maryland bridges, we would use the adhesive, but we'd also do a total etch system on the enamel and the dentin. The Automix syringe is truly outstanding. It has this orange tip that has a 90 degree twist. And when you twist this, it kind of opens a valve in the Automix syringe. So you can see on the left, the tip 
and this has this kind of inside connection part and I don't know how they did it but it's kind of cool the syringe is very innovative and you can see that it's kind of compact compared to most I've used in the past and what you'll also notice is it has a very ergonomic handle which is easy to hold and it kind of fits in your fingers properly which is some of the other ones are kind of clumsy and big the tip is very small so it's easy to kind of handle as well and easy to put on it's very easy to kind of orient from the inside of this to the kind of outside of the uh, auto mix syringe it does say TR so it has translucent and it has this 90 degree valve as we talked about so when you put on the tip and then you turn it it clicks into position and this just opened the valve so that now the cement can be expressed so this is very innovative in my mind because uh, the valve when you take this uh, take this uh, kind of tip off it closes the valve and so it keeps it protected so this gives us again 80 percent less cement waste and 50 percent less plastic waste so this is kind of innovative now another feature of the syringe is this tactile expensing control and you can see that this clicks down so it allows you to get the exact amount of cement that you want out at the right time and sometimes I would use things in the past and what would happen is all the cement would all come out at the same time and it would just be driving me crazy now for step 8 expressing the Reliax Universal Cement into the bridge we're going to use this specialized syringe to do this and you can see that tip is really kind of cool because as the cement comes down it's uh, mixing like it always did but you can see the cement starting to be expressed down through the tip and this is important for us to bleed this out because that first little bit you want to make sure you have a uniform consistent kind of mixture and so as it comes down and comes out through the tip this allows us to get that mixture that we really need to do the bonding so express that first bit off and then you'll be ready to go when we go to express the cement into the crown it's actually almost like a little bit of a painting motion so you don't have to fill the whole crown completely up or the bridge abutment you actually put it in and uh, you can kind of paint the walls it's so delicate and precise and so it is mixing the cement as it goes down the tip it's hard to see that but it is, it is a mixing tip so watch my dental assistant as she's coming up the sides and she's kind of painting it. it's very intuitive because you're not going to fill it up like I used to do with the other cement because it was kind of clumsy and big and as I go to the mouth and put it into position I'm going to push it down with my finger and hold it steadily into place and this is going to give me an outstanding bond even within you know five seconds of curing now I thought in the past that when you have a really strong bond it makes it more difficult to clean the cement because it just made sense to me but now I'm seeing a little bit of a difference with this cement because when I bond this in place and then start to come back and clean this up I was truly surprised at what I found out because in the past I used to think that bonding meant that you're gonna have a difficult cleanup but look at this I took a scaler and was knocking this off pretty quick and usually underneath the bridge in the embrasures is tough watch this oh, this is crazy look at that cement how it came out and that's the first pass with the floss and my dental assistant was truly amazed as well because she's seen me have to go in here with the seri saw and clean this area so it was really remarkable about how easy this cleanup was and certainly a feature of the cement that you should really know about this is one of my favorite features of this whole system so now we're all done we've got the bridge cemented and we're gonna take the tip off so this tip has been used we can't use it again on another patient so we're gonna be uh, taking it off and the valves are closing by themselves so they're self-closing valves so now we can just wipe and disinfect this and put it back in the drawer for next patient but you're able to disinfect the whole system and you're not keeping a tip on that was used in someone's mouth and so I think this is a really cool design 
And so we get 80% less resin waste because of this. And also that tip can be thrown out. And this is 50% less plastic waste. So you, know, you have to be environmentally conscious and that's important. Lastly, there's a term in the 80s with, which was WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. With the cement, there's not that hidden part of the plunger that you don't have cement, and I love this. And then, of course, this uh, less waste is always good because I'm not paying for stuff that's setting inside of that tip, and that's just not really cool. So this has been Dr. Scott McLean. I'm sharing my experiences with you, and I give this a two thumbs up. I think this is an amazing system. And I love that it is uh, giving an excellent bond, but at the same time, the innovation with delivery has been outstanding. And last, it's very obvious to me that someone's been researching and listening to dentists because this product has been well thought out to work well. And these are things that uh, dentists have been talking about for years. And so my hat goes off and uh, I see other people are recognizing this product as well.